Hello everyone, this is Tabassum Hussain. I'm here with one of my Lean Six Sigma participant, Erika. Uh, how are you doing, Erika? Good, you? I'm good, thank you very much for being here. Uh, so she is from which industry? Uh, third party logistics, supply chain. Third party logistics, supply chain. Okay, so we were having a discussion and during the class as well, we were able to see that, you know, though uh, there are many terminologies which are Six Sigma related and methodologies which are already in place in the industry, you're practicing it, but you don't realize that what kind of actually methodologies you're, uh, you know, you're practicing and how you can improve them. And if there are any missing parts uh, or processes or steps there are there, which you can fix and you can improve the systems. So um, how, Erika, do you relate with what you have understood about Six Sigma now and the activities what you were doing already like you know the processes were in place and you were working already in uh, in the system so I think the way that we're we're really using Six Sigma unknowingly mm -hmm. is first of all making sure that we're reviewing all accurate data um, mm -hmm. every time that we're pulling any data to review to make changes to any setups or uh, layouts in the building we're always pulling 100% accurate data um, and reviewing and splitting everything out using pivot tables, using the different spreadsheets, just like you showed us today. Um, yeah, just things like that. And then the different layouts and how we display the information, the different steps to define and, um, mm -hmm. and process and analyze. It's mm -hmm. all things that we're doing, just the wording of these terms is very different. That's, that's really interesting, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think that there, we were able to know some different tools which were not there? So you are performing, you are doing those jobs but you are not using those tools which can really make it more easy or more uh, visible. What do you think? Definitely. So there was quite a few formulas that I think would make a lot of our analyzing a lot easier to do. Um, mm -hmm. Right now everything is, there's a lot more time constraints because we're doing things a little bit more manually versus yes. these interesting formulas that I've never mm -hmm. seen before, but they really do seem to work. Okay, so, um, and what do you think about value stream mapping or anything which you think, think that among these tools, let's say root cause analysis, value stream mapping or FMEA, uh, where do you think that that's a necessity which was missing? Because I do understand there, there are many things you were putting in place and they are in practice in your organization, uh, but what was missing out? Do you think that value stream mapping is something which was already there and you were using or this is something which, uh, a new introduction? I think it's something that we're using, but we're just not using it to the full extent that we could, okay. just because of the lack of information. FMEA, mm -hmm. like I mentioned, it's I never heard the term before this class, but it <laughs> is exactly what I'm doing in my job on a day-to-day -day basis. So, okay. so when we went through of all the steps of FMEA, do you think that you were following all the same steps, or there were like it looks like more systematic than before? I think it was all the same steps. Oh really? Yeah. So you are a genius. You discovered it yourself. <laughs> like you should go into, <laughs> into the like pioneers of Six Sigma. You created those. Yeah. yeah the, I mean, all the steps were the same. It's just the only difference between how it was laid out here and how we do it in our business is yeah. we have the different departments that take care of some of those. So when we talked okay. about like the quality, um, that's all done by different departments versus okay. the way it's described in the course. It's the one person that one Six Sigma person is doing all of the different areas. Uh, but with the team, yes, you cannot do it alone, right? Yeah. Because they have to give you a good input of all the processes and steps because we have discussed about the as is and to be situations, the future situations and your benchmarks as well, which you want to achieve and the gap analysis as well. Mm -hmm. But you will not be able to see through the things very clearly if you are not getting any input from your teams, right? Because they right. need to give you the details of all the steps, etc. Right. So uh, 